Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're really going to talk about pathways to and from glucose and also discuss glycogen. We're really going to be differentiating a few pathways here that have really similar sounding names, are often confused, and hopefully understand the difference between them. And those are glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. Let me actually make sure this is spelled right, glycogenolysis. Now, a few things here that we should probably understand before we go any further is what the meaning of genesis and lysis are, okay? When we see the suffix genesis, like you see here, glycogenesis, that implies that we're building something or we're making it, okay? So if our prefix is glyco, that means we are generating glycogen. We're making glycogen. Uh, down here you see this suffix, genesis. So this is gluconeogenesis. This means that we are going to be making more glucose. And we'll get to this in a few minutes, but the neo means it's new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. When you see the suffix lysis, that means we're breaking something down. Okay, So in this term, lysis of glycogen, we're breaking glycogen down. So genesis means we are building something or making it. Lysis means we are breaking it down. So right here, I've got glucose. Glucose is really our central factor right here. And the question we need to ask ourselves before we dissect these definitions is, when do we need more glucose in the blood and when do we need less? Okay. So let's consider first a case where we are fasting. So we haven't eaten in a while, or we could even be exercising. We could be doing some heavy duty exercise in the gym. What would happen to blood glucose really in both of those cases if we didn't do anything to support it? Well, if we haven't eaten in a while, if we're fasting, blood glucose is gonna decrease, right? Because our cells all over our body, the heart, your muscle, your brain, they're still consuming glucose. So if you're just fasting and not eating, uh, your blood glucose is going to fall, okay? If we are exercising, if we don't supplement any glucose, well, again, now our muscles are working really hard. And again, our blood glucose is going to drop because, again, our cells are utilizing that glucose. So really, under exercising conditions, assuming we're not resupplementing glucose, or if we're fasting, we haven't eaten in a while, blood glucose levels would normally drop. Okay, And they may still drop even if we do something about it. So what do we need to do if blood glucose levels drop? We need to use negative feedback and bring that blood glucose back up. So if we're in a fasting state, that response is going to be pathways that lead toward more glucose. Hopefully that makes sense. Think about it in terms of negative feedback. If blood glucose drops, let's get more glucose, make more of it, and put it back in the blood. So that way we sustain or maintain blood glucose levels. The first pathway that does that is gluconeogenesis. This is a pathway mostly carried out by the liver. It can occur in the kidneys, but we usually are just going to say the liver. Liver is the main thing that does this. And what gluconeogenesis is, is it takes uh, different molecules around the cell. Alanine is an amino acid. Lactic acid or lactate, same thing. Uh, that's a byproduct of metabolism. Pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis. Uh, these are non-carbohydrate sources of energy. And what the liver can do is it can transform these molecules into glucose. So the liver can take alanine, it can turn it into glucose. The liver can take lactic acid or lactate, convert it to glucose. The liver can take pyruvate, and it can convert it to glucose. And this process, generally speaking, is gluconeogenesis, taking non-carbohydrate precursors and making new glucose. Again, that genesis right here means we are making, what are we making? More glucose, okay? Now, one thing that's worth mentioning about this pathway is that it tends to be stimulated by glucagon and epinephrine. That makes sense epinephrine we would see when we're exercising, right? 
glucagon we would see when blood glucose levels fall. So those are the two cases we talked about. When we're either fasting, we'd see glucagon, or when we're exercising and not resupplementing glucose, we would see epinephrine in the blood. Okay, Those trigger the liver and maybe the kidneys also to start making more glucose. That's pathway number one. Pathway number two is glycogenolysis. You'll notice this one is also stimulated by the same factors, glucagon, glucagon and epinephrine. And glycogenolysis, what does that name mean? Well, we're going to see the breakdown, the lysis, of what? Glycogen. Now, first of all, what is glycogen? Glycogen is the storage form of glucose, and it mostly is stored in the skeletal muscles. It can also be stored in the liver. Uh, however, when we're exercising, we're going to see the vast majority of that come from skeletal muscle. Again, you're going to have some from liver, and you can actually break down that glycogen. But for the most part, we're going to be looking at skeletal muscle. It's going to be the major source of glycogen. Now, all glycogen is, is it's a polymer of glucoses. Okay? So per glycogen molecule, you could have thousands of glucose molecules that make it up. So if you break down that glycogen, you're going to be producing more glucose. And so if blood glucose levels start to fall, well, there's going to be some signals like glucagon and epinephrine that can trigger the glycogen in skeletal muscle to be broken down. And so that process is glycogenolysis. And so glycogen will be converted or broken down into glucoses, which will then go into the blood to maintain blood glucose levels. Hopefully that makes sense. Now what happens if our blood glucose becomes high? Well, blood glucose would typically become high after a meal. So you go and eat a meal that has carbohydrates in it or maybe even sugar, which you probably shouldn't be doing, and that glucose is gonna be absorbed through your bloodstream, through the GI tract, and it's gonna end up in your blood, of course, and it's gonna raise that blood glucose. Well, we don't want blood glucose going up too much, right? Because we can be at risk for hyperglycemia, and if it remains elevated for long periods of time, diabetes. So we need to get that glucose into cells. We need to remove it from the blood and get it into cells. One really good way that you can do that is by transporting the glucose into cells and building it back up into glycogen. Well, if we're building glucose into glycogen, building, that's going to be glycogenesis. Genesis means making more of or building. So we're going to be building what? Building glycogen. Right? And the way we build glycogen is by taking that glucose when it's in the excess in the blood, transporting it into cells, and then polymerizing it into glycogen. And we just store it there. And then when blood glucose levels start to fall again, maybe we're fasting, maybe we go exercise, we can reverse that and take that glycogen and convert it back to glucose for maintaining blood glucose. And that's glycogenolysis. Okay. So again, this pathway right here is somewhat reversible, although it's a different set of processes. Right? Now this glycogenesis, where we're taking glucose and building it into glycogen, glycogenesis, this one is stimulated oops, by insulin. Okay. Insulin is a different hormone, and insulin is of course released after you eat a meal, when your blood glucose becomes elevated. And insulin tells cells, hey, let's get that glucose into those cells, and then polymerize it into glycogen. And so that way, this helps to, also with negative feedback, maintain blood glucose levels. If they start to go up too high, bring them back down. Now, before we conclude this video, I wanna talk about one more thing that's not listed here, and that's actually this other pathway, which it takes place inside cells, and it's called glycolysis, okay? Now, glycolysis, what this literally is, is it's the breakdown, so it is glucose, breakdown into pyruvate, and we can more or less just say energy. So it breaks down some glucose into pyruvate, or we can just say energy, all right? And it's really the way that cells actually utilize the glucose. So all three of these pathways right here, these are just pathways to and from glucose, either taking glucose and polymerizing it into glycogen, or taking glycogen and breaking it down to glucose, or taking non-carbohydrate molecules and turning them into glucose. Okay? But what happens when cells need to utilize that glucose? Well, once they get that glucose into the cell and they need to make energy from it, they just use glycolysis. So this is a separate metabolic pathway 
where glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. And of course you get other things in there like ATP, you get NADH, basically things associated with energy metabolism. And then the cells can of course utilize those molecules, okay? So make sure you can differentiate these four terms, okay? And understand what they are, what processes they are used for, and then also what signals tend to trigger those processes to occur. So hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.